After a seven-year absence, former Manchester United boss Ron Atkinson has returned to frontline football. Sky One has cast him as troubleshooter for cash-strapped, success-starved clubs at the bottom of the football pile. <coughs> Peterborough United have asked him to mentor their rookie boss, Steve Bleasdale. But in a world where the manager is meant to be all-powerful, how will this feisty example of the breed cope with outside intervention? Forward! That's it, Danny! Fucking hell! First goal! The fucking referee loses this game, I'll fucking chill him. Big Ron has already witnessed an impressive Peterborough victory over Notts County. Today, he makes his first trip to the training ground to meet Steve with his players. Morning. All right, Gaffer. Morning, boss. No, I'm Ron. You're boss. You're the boss, are you? You're the boss of all bosses. Pleasantries dispensed with, Ron scrutinises Posh's training. They're preparing for this week's game against Bristol Rovers. Well done. Four balls. Play in, set, play out. Use the big area. That's what I call a Raz. It's a Friday morning Raz. They don't be working hours. It's a cold morning. So basically, um, it's just getting a touch feel on the ball. Bristol's watching, sir. Our troubleshooting specialist observes a full training session before reaching his initial diagnosis. First impressions, he, he was, he's bubbly, he's lively, he's enthusiastic. His sessions seemed organised, so no, no complaints about it. The squad's not very big, can't afford any injuries. Um, we've got a couple of key players missing. The first team goalkeeper's out with cracked ribs and they could do with him back a bit quick. One of the things that surprised me watching them train was how the goalkeepers were very much left to their own devices. I think that's one of the things I might be recommending. They should be looking at getting somebody to take a specific interest in the goalkeepers, a specialist in that position. I think with Steve at the moment, I think because he's, he's moved up from coach to manager, I think he wants to do virtually everything himself. And uh, first impressions, he needs somebody with him. You know, otherwise you'll find he's going to be talking to senior players. And although there's a value in that, I think there's also a danger in that as well. Ron decides it's time for his first man-to-man -man conversation with Steve Bleasdale. Steve, four weeks into the job, how are you enjoying it? I'm enjoying it uh, very much so. It's, it's been absolutely tremendous for me. I've done things slightly different from uh, the past manager. I've got my own style and I'm really enjoying it and it's been absolutely brilliant. How do you think the players have accepted your transition from coach to manager? You are friendly with the lads, you know, and, and the lads kind of take the mickey and you like a bit of fun. Um, but I've had to try and change that kind of fun side to the, a bit more serious, you know. There has got to be a golf, you know, being the manager. You've yeah. got to have that golf. When I was non-league, yeah, they called me like Ron or called yeah. me loads of stuff. But yeah, uh, yeah. then as soon as I stepped into as a league manager, it was boss, gaffer, whatever. Yeah. And I always maintain that, you know. Gaffer would be nice if I'm ready to be called gaffer, then I'm gaffer, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But with five games, four wins... Uh, I've got to look at my next three or four games and, and that will really key it down to them calling me that. Peterborough may be poised in the playoff positions, but Saturday's opponents are hot on their heels. A win is crucial. And Steve is without promising young defender Sean St. Ledger, who suspended. Enter Big Ron and some potentially priceless insider knowledge. The two kids you're going to play against I had as youngsters. A uh, junior ago, ago yeah, and, the, uh, and a kid walker at the Villa, had him at the Villa, and uh, they are a threat in the division, aren't they? You 31 know, yeah. goals between them this yeah. season already, so yeah. we've got to make sure that we defend our box and defend our area well, yeah. you know. I mean, Sean St. Ledger's uh, going to be a, a big miss for me, but Phil Bolland's uh, quite capable of sweeping up behind, you know. Uh, if the boy a goal goal does spin and he's good in the channels, yeah. I'll make sure that he's round, you know. I think the keynote for Saturday, certainly against the two front players from your boys, is... Concentration. Oh, tell you. As Ron looks forward to his first chance to assess Peterborough on home turf, Steve impresses with his diligent attention to detail. Tactics are presented, nutrition is on hand. All that's left is for him to tap into the players' minds. Do not rest on your laurels. The past five games have gone. This is for the taking. It could be a day where it's into Quinny all the time. We play off them with bodies around them and we fucking get at them. When ugly things happen, you are ugly yourselves and you carry on being ugly till you win the game. Can you do it? 
Yes, oh, Let's Let's go. Go. Bring out the gladiators. But despite the thorough preparations, the posh look a completely different side the one that impressed Ron just a week ago. Touch, touch, touch! As Peterborough flounder, Ron's initial concerns prove all too valid. Firstly, the lack of specialist goalkeeper coaching comes home to roost. A standing goalie, Lee Harrison, fails to keep out a go-go shot. Will it go in? Yes, it has. Harrison got an arm to the shot. But it's spooned up and it's finished up in the back of the net. Fucking cannot give it away, dear. Jackson! Jackson! Get out! With no assistant to help him, Ron's also worried how much the young manager is taking on by himself. And at half time, Steve Bleasdale faces the first big test of his motivational skills. That, for me, was the worst I've seen yet. The 48 minutes to come now is going to be the best that I've seen yet. You've got to get switched on. It's about you, your character. Go fucking do it. Come it's on, up to us. Come on, come on. Despite Steve's efforts in the dressing room, more suspect goalkeeping sees the posh go two down shortly after the break. Well, this further punishment for Peterborough United and it's Walker who's took the ball away beyond Harrison. But it's their efforts at the other end which expose how stretched the squad is. With leading scorer Danny Crow having a nightmare game, the only replacement available is Richard Logan, himself struggling for fitness. But to add to Steve's woes, he fails to make any kind of impact. Jump over the ball, maybe. No, it's Kennedy who strikes it. Oh, tremendous shot and a great flying save. The posh do eventually get on the score sheets. Newton passed one uh, defender and then a goal from Holden, from the captain. Just too late, it's just too late. The owner is less than impressed by his side's surprising lack of appetite for the fight. People spend hard earned money. They don't mind if you try your what's it's off and you ain't good enough. We just hold our hands up and say, hey, we give it our best shot, we weren't good enough. We never tried from start to finish. We give up. We never broke sweat. We never done nothing. We was a disgrace. Meanwhile, Ron tries to help Steve put his first major setback as manager into perspective. In the last seven days, you've had the two sides of management and your terrific performance last week. Today, go on, disappointing, wasn't it? I thought Bristol Rovers battle for their lives today, and you're spot on, we just weren't at the races. Let's hope it's a one-off. Let's hope last week is nearer the norm yeah. than this week. I think next week's very much an exam of looking at one or two and seeing whether they are, in my opinion and your opinion, I think, whether they're the boys that can take you the last yard. Luckily, although Posh have lost ground to their close rivals, Bristol Rovers, other results have gone their way, and they remain sixth. But for Steve, the honeymoon period as rookie boss is now officially over. And the harsh realities of the new job are hitting home. It's been difficult with the transition from a coach. I've had to try and get the players on my side, you know, get a little bit of respect for you. Would have been a bit different if it had gone in at a new club and you'd have gaffed from day one, you're making decisions from day one. The players don't know you, you stamp your own authority on it. I want to be successful, I want to get forward in life because as a footballer, I didn't have a fantastic career, you know, and I've got them in the playoffs. And I've just done my best. I can't do no more. It's Monday morning. The Bristol Rovers' performance is still eating away at Barry Fry, and he can't resist wading into the post-mortem. Right, lads, you don't often see me, and when you do this trouble, You've worked bloody hard all season to get yourselves in a playoff position. For fuck's sake, don't let it fucking go now. I want total focus on Peterbury United getting in the playoffs and being successful. I pay your wages, I expect for you to give me and the gaffer 100% commitment. Fucking got it? Anybody got any questions? Fucking make it happen. All of us together. 
working for one goal. Fucking promotion. Good luck, chaps. Apparently chastised, the players returned to 